shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue
so we breathe you in. Oh, yes, yes. Nisio Lima. Julio. Filiosia. I want to share this right here. Isaiah chapter 33. Let's go to verse 6. Now, let's go to verse 5. It says, The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. For he dwelleth on high. And look what it says next. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Now, I want you to understand what it says when he has filled Zion with judgment. Well, he's saying that he has filled you with decisions to make. He has filled you with his perspective. He has filled you with his desires. With his requests. With his enjoyment and his pleasures. This is real powerful, right? It says that he has filled. That's past tense. It didn't say that he will fill. He said he has filled. Zion with judgment. Now, saints, if you look at the word judgment. How does a judge judge? There's something that the judge is looking at that the judge wants. And when the judge sees that um, is either not carried out or carried out, the judge makes a verdict, a verdict. But where's the judgment coming from? The judge's desire. So either the judge's desire is being fulfilled or not fulfilled. So if the judge judges, if it's being fulfilled, then the judge rewards. If it's not being fulfilled, then the judge sends the sword, which explains Isaiah chapter 1, verse uh, 17 through 19. No, uh, verse 19 through 20. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 through 20. It says, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. Then Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, uh, Isaiah chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter one, verse 17 through 21. Deuteronomy chapter 28 talked about the curses for the disobedience. Now, both the blessing and both the curse is a judgment. I want you to see this from now on. The blessing and all those things that happen when the blessing is occurring, that's judgment. And then the curses, all those things that are occurring, that's judgment. Both of them are judgment. But see, the blessings are overtaking because when God judges, he sees what he wants. The curses overtake because when he judges, he doesn't see what he wants. Man, I'm explaining everything. I'm explaining some things to you on here. So even to become anointed, you're judged. So God pits all on your head. Why? Why? Because though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
You chose to fear no evil. You let him guide you beside the green pastures, lead you beside the still waters. You fulfilled Psalm 23. So now he says, I'll anoint your head with oil. Now that's a judgment. Now watch this. Once the anointing comes, then there's another judgment. Now God sees what is the fruits of that anointing that he has given to you. Because saints, remember what I told you. Oftentimes, you think about the anointing as just a power. But no, the anointing is what God has taught you. So to, to be called anointed, <laughs> to be called anointed, <laughs> I'm going to grow me a big old beard, like 6'9". To be called anointed, it means that you have been taught and trained. So when you're taught and trained, God gives you a term called anointed. See, now the Holy Spirit is going to judge you again. What, what I want to show you is that all throughout your life, you're going to be judged. So, so that's why you should always wear the garment of praise. That's why you should always be thankful. That's why you should always give God glory. I'm going to show you something else. The Bible talked about not to rejoice when your enemy falls. So that, that, that's a shocking text because, um, let me show you. This is, in, uh, this is in Proverbs chapter 24. Look what it says, verse 17. It says, rejoice not when thine enemy fall. And let not your heart be glad when he stumbles, let's go forward. As a matter of fact, I want to go here on my Bible because Bible apps be. All right. Proverbs 24, verse 18. Lest the Lord see it and it displease him. And he turn away his wrath from him. No. Why am I using this text as a reference? Because the Spirit of the Lord just spoke it to me as I'm talking. Because the shocking thing is this. What just happened was God was judging someone. And then when, 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 when someone that hated that someone laughs and rejoices and says, Yay! God said, Oh, huh? Wait. Come on, switch that around. Let's, let's go over here. What's the point of this? You're always being judged. Look what it says, lest the Lord turns and sees it. Okay, what does it mean, sees it? It means that now he, 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 he steps into judgment mode on you and then when he studies you, he sees something. And what did the Bible say? When he sees it, it displeases him. So the main point that I'm using here in this text is this. That your life is always underneath judgment and God is judging you to see whether or not you're pleasing him or displeasing him. So saints... When the fig tree was amongst all the figs, the fig was chilling. And one day King Jesus just confront that fig tree and it's unaware, it's unprepared. The fig tree looked at Jesus, it could see. You think that Jesus was talking to something that couldn't understand, huh? The fig tree was fully alive. It had ears. It was a plant. And he asked the fig tree, where, where, where my pleasure at? Saints, you got to see all throughout your life, this is what the Lord does. 
He comes to you to see if you can produce the pleasure that he sent you to the earth to do in that body that you're in. It might be to spend a couple moments in tongues. It may be praise. Lord, I thank you for all that you have given to me. I praise you for my house. I praise you for my home. I praise you for transportation. I praise you for my job. Thank you for every open door that you have opened for me. Thank you, Lord, for giving me strength in my body. Thank you for health. Thank you for born again status. Thank you for transforming me. I praise you for dying on the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you for sending your spirit. Thank you for giving me a chance. Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to learn. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for counseling me. Thank you for convicting me. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for shielding me. Thank you for keeping me unoffended. Thank you for keeping me focused. Thank you for an anointing to serve with gladness. Thank you for a grace to praise you. Thank you for grace to love you. Thank you for grace to believe you. Thank you for grace to believe your prophet. Thank you for grace to understand your word. Thank you for grace to walk in the light and not in darkness. While you're praising God, you're giving him a table of provision. When you're praising God, you're giving him a table, a buffet. That's what fills up his soul, his belly. When he sees his character in you. That's what makes God experience satisfaction when he can identify with your conduct and see that it is the same as his. Did you know that God is thankful? Did you know that God uses thankfulness to keep himself built up? Did you know that? Did you know that God uses thank thanksgiving? You say, how does he do that? Look at Jesus. God came down in the body, named him Jesus, and then watch, Jesus took the five loaves and said, Father, I thank you. <laughs> Isaiah said that Jesus was the everlasting Father. Jesus told Philip, whoever sees me sees the Father. So who would, who would Jesus? That's the Father came down in a body that would thank him. That's God talking to God. Your pleasure that you give to God may be forgiving someone, dealing with something out of maturity. Because God don't like to see your soul hurt. God don't like seeing your soul wounded. So if he looks down, remember, if he sees you outside of his image, he's not pleased. Are you seeing this? So saints, forgiveness, we often say forgiveness not for the enemy, it's for you. But listen, forgiveness is for God. Because remember, the Lord is looking at you, and when he see you troubled about something that you should have let go, when he see that you bothered about years ago, he got a deal with the dung in your nature. <laughs> he has risen from the dead. And he is Lord, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue.
confess. Thank God that mercy rewrote my life. Thank God that mercy rewrote my life. Life, oh, oh, I could have fallen. My soul cast way down. Thank God that mercy, it rewrote my life. Look at this song here. I got this custom made, by the way. This is this lit lit, man. This lit lit. I could have fallen, my soul cast way down, yeah. Thank God that mercy rewrote my life. I could have fallen, my soul cast way down. So God looks, he looks at you to get pleasure. That's what judgment is all about. How does God really judge you? He just investigates to see if you're doing what you're taught. Hallelujah. 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 Do you know that Ruth got judged? And when he saw that she was doing what she was taught, she's promoted. But she's judged. She's being judged. Wow. Look. If your en if you think your enemy falls, don't rejoice. Lest the Lord see it and it displeases him and he turns away his wrath from your enemy. Now watch this. Why did the enemy experience the wrath of God? Because God was judging your enemy. But when God went to judge you. He sees you getting so much pleasure. And then he switches the judgment. The whole point of Proverbs 24, what I'm talking about here is how God is live watching you. To see if he sees himself in your attitude, your mindset, your focus, your goals, your decisions, your thankfulness, your worship, your honor, your maturity, your faithfulness, your purity, your consistency. He's looking to see if he sees his wisdom. Also, I want to say this. Um. Always remember not to not don't forget that 24 hours in a day, there is something that God has anointed you to do. And when you do it, all of your strength, all of your victory and all of your dominion is in that activity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every day, a little child 
honors their parents. And when they honor their parents, all of their strength, when they honor their parents, all of that strength is in that activity. Saints, I want to share this revelation. I never shared it before, ever, ever. Lucifer was worshiping God every single day. And the day that Lucifer was tardy, a little bit late, procrastinated just a slight bit, Lucifer mind went crazy and said, let me exalt myself above God. She had titties in a beard. Lucifer had a sexy body. And some transgender isms going on after she said it. After she said it. Saints. As soon as Lucy said what she said, Lucifer did not have the strength to go forward with God. I want you to hear this. All Lucifer did was neglect the schedule in which the strength was hidden. Hallelujah. So all that has to happen is you just reject the schedule of the spirit for your life in 24 hours and now you struggle it. Listen, why was Balaam so weak? Number one, the schedule was corrupted. Balak's men was able to access him. Once Balak's men had such access to him, the schedule already corrupt. So truth be told, Balaam is weaker than usual. Did you know that Balaam wasn't always that weak? But when the schedule is aborted, now there's another energy level that's lower than it was before. There's a, there's a, there's a strength level that's lower than it was before. For instance, Samson was supposed to dip. Samson stayed right there. Delilah said, why, why you don't tell me the secret to your strength, Daddy? Oh my gosh, I like how you move it, move it. I like how you lift up the weights and I saw you working out and whoosh, whoosh, you're just doing your sit-ups and push-ups. And Samson was like, yeah, girl, you know, you know how I do. You know, I do a little something, something, you know. I got a little percolating packs, you know what I'm saying, no. Me do a little sit-ups, no, man. Me do a little push-push-ups. Me do a little sit-ups. Me do a little leg crunch. If Samson was Jamaican, boy, all the Jamaicans somewhere saying, whoa, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Whoa, whoa, he was Jamaican. He probably was Chinese. Yeah, me, me. I give you a little tip. I lift the weights. But it don't got no duck sauce. But I lift the weights. I ordered some Chinese food. It didn't come yet. But I did. It didn't, it, but I did. <laughs> he could have been white. Samson could have been white. <laughs> oh my gosh, girl. <laughs> you know, I, I got a treat for you. 
<laughs> I heard what you said you wanted for Christmas. I heard what you said that you wanted. <laughs> you said, <laughs> oh my gosh. You... I heard you when you told me you had a dream. You went to the grocery store and started to be in the sausage left back and wasn't no food in there. I heard it. <laughs> yeah. He could have been Asian. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've been hit by, you've been struck by. <laughs> he could have been black. See, I ain't saying, see, Jamaican and black is two different things. He could have been black. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know how we rock it, man. You know what I'm saying? This is blood. You know what I'm saying? We was up there. whoop de woo Nah, man. He, he could have had some boosie corners. <laughs> But see, Samson stayed somewhere in an activity too long. No strength. No strength. See, I want you to see this. You notice that the whole discussion was what is the secret to your strength? But guess what? He was losing strength while he was in a schedule that he wasn't supposed to be in. My God. See, I want you to see this. Delilah had already ripped the strength because that conversation was illegal. You see what I'm saying? God didn't schedule for him to discuss that secret with anybody on earth. So once that is there, the strength already is not flowing correctly. Are you seeing this? The woman in Genesis She's outside of her schedule. God never, never scheduled her to speak to a serpent. Look at that. God did not schedule her ever to speak to a serpent. So while she's speaking to a serpent, she's already deceived. Saints, do you know the real reason why the Bible says that it was her that was deceived and not Adam? Adam never spoke to the deceiver. It was the serpent. Are you seeing this? The reason why I said that she was deceived because her schedule was never to do that. Remember, she's a help me. What's she doing talking to a snake? That's not in her schedule. She's royalty. She's the wisdom of God. She is the pleasure of God. She is the beauty of God. She the booty of God, too. <laughs> I just had to put that in there. Don't just edit that one out. You, somebody hijacked my phone just now. That's what it was. See, I don't be not on my job. Not on my job. Fungi, Lafia. I'm going to have to block some of these comments. These comments is getting out of hand. Some of y'all being disrespectful. I have to block some of these comments on here. <laughs> I have to block some of these comments on here. Some of y'all, I'm not trying. There's too much visuals and residuals. <laughs> some of y'all, I'm about to block you too. Shoot, think I won't. Think I won't do it. <laughs> too much visuals, you know what I'm saying. Oh. Turn it around. <laughs> Turn it. God said he would turn. What the devil meant for evil, God will make it good. It's okay for your laugh, baby. It's okay for your laugh. It's okay for your laugh. God done left some of y'all house 30 years ago and came to my house. God enjoy me. It's okay for you to laugh, player. Pimping, simping, 
Huh? It's okay for you to laugh. God laugh all the time around me. God, me, God don't be rebuking me. Father don't be rebuking me. I'm his son. I don't, he don't be rebuking me. We be enjoying ourselves. We be enjoying ourselves. You understand? You dig? You dig? You dig? Huh? So, 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 so hereby you understand that God judges your life constantly to see if you're pleasurable to him or you're displeasing him. And he does investigations on you. So saints, imagine when God looked at Daniel, he saw that he was excellent. But Daniel was underneath an investigation. Why really did God pick Moses to go to Pharaoh? And then why did God harden Pharaoh's heart? You know what that means? God made Pharaoh extremely stubborn. What was he doing? He was creating courage, perseverance, and momentum in Moses. Number one, remember Moses ran from God for 40 years. So when you run from God, when God judges you, he has to pitch you in a situation and tell you you can't run. Come on. <laughs> Come on here. Come on, baby. Burn, baby, burn. Come on here. Moses had Pharaoh hard in his heart, right in front of his face, Moses had Pharaoh hardening in his heart every time he prophesied, but God was showing Moses, I need you to not let the stony faces of another person hinder your destiny. I need you to stop letting how people look at you and how they respond to you affect what I have called you to do. I need you to stop letting how they uh, correspond with your prophetic anointing, I need it to stop. I, I don't need you to be influenced by that. Because if you think about it, remember, when they said, we saw that you killed that man, what did he did? He got nervous, right? When them two sissies was fighting, I know there was two sissies. <laughs> two Hebrews, whatever they was. There was two sissies. They said, Fuck. no, honor, no, stop, stop. Stomp, 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 stomp. Moses said, hey, 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 stop it. Y'all both cut it out. Why? Who you think you is? We saw you kill somebody the other day. Oh, yes, he did. He did kill somebody. You want us to call 5 -0? We about to call 5 on you, Moses. You better get up out of here. Moses said, hey. Moses ran like a little sissy. For 40 years, he was hiding from God. So God said, I'm about to judge him. So God came through a, a, a plant, a tree, a burning bush. He said, Moses. Moses. Moses saw that tree burning. You know what that tree burning really could symbolize as well? It can represent that tree of the knowledge of good and evil that Moses listened to to run from God. God set that tree on fire. And now Moses finally is taken on a path to gain heart. To gain dedication. To gain power. To persevere in his assignment. And not be taken out of it because of people. Saints, look at who God called Moses to lead. lead. Those people were very stubborn. But what is God doing in his heart? Giving him faithfulness, diligence. Momentum, causing him to fulfill his task without going backwards. I come to tell you that everything that you experience in life, the Lord uses it.
to form the heart that he saw when he sent you to the earth. Not the heart that gets corrupted, but the heart that he saw. Remember, you were always spirit, but when he made you a soul, he pitched you as a fetus in your mother's womb. He pitched you as a little body in your mother's womb. When I look at Zende, I think about it. This is what I created. It's funny if you look at somebody like me and you say, well, what? you know, you can't be no God. You're not a creator. I got about a hundred more creations. <laughs> I'm joking around, man. Let's go to Isaiah 33, verse 6. It says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord, his treasure. I want to talk to you about this just real quickly. Look at what this says here. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Notice that word stability. This is what wisdom and knowledge, the more you're learning, it makes you stable. So, so the established heart is really the learning heart. The established heart is really the learning heart. Watch that here. The, the established heart is really the learning heart. So, so Adam couldn't stay in the garden and it be established there because he stopped learning. Are you seeing this? Uh, Samson couldn't keep on moving with that strength because he stopped learning how to protect the secret to that strength. When he stopped learning how to protect the secret, he couldn't be stable. Are you seeing this? So wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. So how do I stay rooted and grounded in the Lord? Wisdom and knowledge has to keep on coming to you, coming from you. Now, how does knowledge come from you? Knowledge comes from you where now you can exemplify the wisdom at work in your soul. Is, is where now you could demonstrate the wisdom in which you carry. So when Solomon saw the two harlots, the knowledge came from him. Because he said, let us kill this baby. And the one that wanted to preserve the baby, he knew that's the mother. That's knowledge coming from. Remember what King Jesus did instead of stone the woman. He said, he that hath no sin. You cast the first stone. That's knowledge coming from King Jesus. So wh where in the Bible did knowledge come to King Jesus? Uh-oh. 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 Where in the Bible did knowledge come to King Jesus? Where? Where? When the father said, this is my beloved son. In whom I'm well pleased. The knowledge was coming from him when he said, He that have no sin, you cast the first stone. The knowledge was coming from him when he said, Go show yourself to the priest. The knowledge was coming from him when he said, Off up the things that Moses asked for according to the law. The knowledge was coming from him when he said, Bless are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. That's the knowledge coming from him. The knowledge coming to him was when the father said, This is my beloved son in whom I well please. And then remember when they heard that thunder and the father said, This is my beloved son. Hear him. 
That's now that's coming to him. Hallelujah. So in this life, knowledge has to come to you and from you. So knowledge has to come from you and to you for you to be stable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, watch this here. Glory to God. Watch this here. Adam was going to teach that woman knowledge. But guess what? That would be knowledge coming to her. But see, knowledge was going to come from her. How? Because she was going to help Adam. While she's helping, that's knowledge coming from her. Cain and Abel was going to have knowledge coming from her. So Mary Magdalene gets delivered from seven devils. That's knowledge coming to her. She learns about the seed principle from King Jesus because she's the biggest sower in Luke chapter 8. That's knowledge coming to her. But where does knowledge come from her? The Lord said, you go tell Peter. Go meet me. Oh. Go meet me in the Galilee trap because it's going down. That song got, boy, they, they're playing that song. And boy, I was in Florida, boy. I grew up in Florida. Everywhere you try to go to Walmart, somebody there, meet me in the trap. The white people was like, oh, gosh, gee, call, call. Call the neighborhood and watch on them. Call the neighborhood now. I saw this nigga behind my back gate on my camera last night. He couldn't do nothing because the alarm went off. Call, call it on them. I, I, <laughs> it was snowing outside. I saw the footprint. He was size seven. I saw size seven feet in my grass. I measured it. These are the same size sevens back there. The footprints was in the backyard. They was wearing that song out. Meet me in the trap. Florida, man. In, in Saints, I grew up in Florida. I, I was there when all of them came out. Um, and Trick Daddy then was there. All of them. Trina. Because the Florida... Now, here's the wild thing. All of them, Luke, and, and we're not talking about the book of Luke. <laughs> and listen, don't worry about, just move on, just move on. When you get to the replay, just speed over that. I was in Florida. One time I watched Luke, and then I received desires. In my... <laughs> Luke was Satan, full of corruption. Uh, full of corruption. And, and saints, all this stuff was going on, man. And saints, I'm going to tell you something. It's shocking. If you live in Florida as a young, young boy and you don't come out with 25 children by the time you're 25, you is delivered. You ain't hear what I said, baby. If you come out of Florida... And you ain't got 25 children by the time you're 25. That means you is delivered. I remember when I was a little boy, I couldn't even ride outside in the bike. The little girls would try to pull me to the back. <laughs> and they was three and four. <laughs> the other one was looking at the other one talking to her. Mama need to change your diaper. What in the baby wipes is going on here? <laughs> they try to pull you to the back. I'll never forget the little girl. I got a good memory. A little girl came up to me and told some, my friend said she won't talk to you. <laughs> you know you you know you in something when little children got friends that they sending on their behalf with messages. My friend said she want to talk to you. Where your friend at? She back here. 
Well, who back there? Nobody. She want to talk to you by herself. She wants some privacy. <laughs> by the way, this stuff really happened now. I know, I know 